what is up guys it's Bucky and welcome to your let's see 12th objective C tutorial and I don't know why my voice is so raspy right now I'm not like sick or anything I just got back from the beach and all of a sudden my voice is raspy now so um I probably sound different from the last tutorials but you'll get used to it so anyways in this tutorial we're gonna be talking about <clears throat> we're gonna be talking about looping and what looping is is it's a way to execute code over and over again without having to type it over and over again so it's the first pretty neat thing that I'm going to be teaching you and uh, there are let's see probably three main huge types of loops and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking to you guys about something called the for loop and uh, let's just go ahead and get started now let's go ahead and make a variable called x and we won't set it to equal to anything for now so what we're going to be doing the very first loop which is our very first program is we're going to be outputting the numbers which means printing them on a screen 1 to 10 now with the tools we have so far what we can do is we can make 10 lines of code um, put ns log and we can put ns log 1 ns log 2 and it can get kind of repetitive but we want to build a program that can repeat this process for us so that's why Objective-C incorporated something called the for loop and what it does is it takes a bit of code and it runs it over and over again for as many times as we tell it to so here's the syntax to create a for loop go ahead and press 4 and go ahead and put empty parentheses after it now you're gonna have three kind of sets of variables or arguments for your for loop the first actually technically they're called three different expressions the first expression is where you want your expression variable to start so what's gonna happen is this go ahead and set x equal to one now the for loop is gonna look at this x and as long as it's within the range well I'm gonna give you guys the whole thing first and then you'll understand set x equal to one and put a semicolon this expression is over now it needs a second expression say x is less than or equal to ten and then that's another expression now for your third expression put x is equal to x plus one and now I'll tell you guys what this means and it'll make sense now you have a variable x and don't forget this entire program is gonna run a piece of code ten times so anyways you have a variable x and it's equal to one now this program is gonna run as long as x is within its boundaries and then the second one you give it its boundaries so you say alright it's equal to one right now to begin with and as long as it's less than or equal to ten I want this program to keep running you say alright well then if it's gonna stay one the whole time it's always gonna be less than or equal to ten in the third one is to solve that problem is to change x you say hold on each time we run this loop we're gonna take that x and add one to it so the first time it's gonna be one alright the next time it's gonna be two alright next time three four five six seven eight nine and ten and once it gets to eleven this expression is not gonna be true anymore so this expression is gonna say alright I'm only supposed to run this program when it's less than or equal to 10 once I get to 11 I'm done so let me go ahead and print all this out for you guys so what can we do with a for loop the line we type after this is gonna run 10 times so let me do something real simple like ns log and then go ahead and put at percent i and then just go ahead and print out x and now let's go ahead and build and run this and you'll see visually what's going on see the very first time it prints out x it says x is equal to one so I'm going to go ahead and print that out right here so it does its whole loop and says is this statement still good yep still less than 10 so I can keep going well I'm gonna take x and add one to it and now the next time I run it it's equal to two the next time equal to three four five six seven eight nine ten and then after ten it sets x to eleven and it says alright I'm only supposed to be running this program when x is less than or equal to ten so since I got to eleven that way I knew that my program wasn't good anymore and I was supposed to stop 
And this one, I mean, you don't even have to do X plus 1. You can do X plus 2. And look what happens here. Save all. It starts out at 1. Then it goes 3, 5, 7, 9. And once it gets past 10, I mean, it knows to shut down. And you can also start at different values. Let me change this back to 1. 1, you can start at something like 4. And it will give it a different starting point. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or you can even go to 4 to um 21. And now when you build and run this and save, it will go from 4 to 21. So again, all a for loop does is it takes a little bit of code and it runs it over and over again for you. So without this for loop, just imagine if we had a program that we had a bit of code we wanted to run a thousand times, which you do in some cases. Well, we would have to type everything a thousand times over and over again, and it'll get really annoying. So that is why they made this nice little thing called a loop to do code over and over again for you. So those are the basics of looping, and that's all you really need to know for for loops for this tutorial. Um, again, there are two different types of loops as well that we're going to be going over in the in tutorials to come. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you, aside from outputting numbers 1 to 10, why you would use a for loop and make this uh, idea and concept stick in your head a little more. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my blog. And by the way, I'll see you next tutorial.